Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss on a mobile application called the SWFEA 2D Frame for Structural Analysis. This app is completely free on Play Store and you will not receive any ads while using this app. So let's start with this, uh, uh, with this application. This is a typical user interface that you will see on your mobile, mobile phone when you start this app. So what you can see here is that there is a axis at the left and at the bottom. The left axis shows you the vertical axis or maybe you can also say that this is the y axis and the horizontal that is the x axis. Currently you can see a tolerance of 0 to uh, units. So there is a increase in the number uh, in, at the, in the multiple of 2, so 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 in both the vertical and the horizontal direction. You can basically change this tolerance by either zooming in or zooming out by using your two fingers. When I zoom in, you can see that the tolerance is, has now been uh, decreased to 0 0.5 units. So. You can see that there is 0 0.5, 1, 1 1.5, 2. Uh, the more I zoom in, the more the tolerance we can receive. So 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.75. So that's the basic uh, graphics of this application. Now, when you start to draw your frames in this application, firstly, what the first step you need to do is you need to define nodes. The nodes are the points in this case uh, at the points at which the frames need to be connected. So I'll draw this by clicking on this button here that is the circle and having a plus that gives us the node uh, selection. I'll now click on the origin that is 0, 0, so I'll press on this. Again I'll click on this uh, node icon here and then mm -hmm. click on the coordinate 0, 4. Uh, I'll create some other points as well. So again, I'll press on this here and again, I'll press here. Now you can see that I've created the nodes 0, 1, 2 and 3. If uh, you don't want this coordinate to the node number 2, at this location, you can also change it by clicking on the node here and then clicking on this pencil type icon. So where do you want your coordinate? I'll type here as 2 comma 4 so it will change its position that's mainly basically this uh, is what it does when you click on the node icon now I will assign some frame frames or beams in, uh, in these nodes so for this I will click on this icon here right just to the node addition of node button so I'll click on this button here there are four options here available to you the add frame element, add cross element, the member section option and the add internal he pin hinge option. In this video, I will firstly discuss about the add frame element. So I will press on this button here. I will click on the zero node here and then on the one node here. So that basically assigns the frame element along the node zero and one. Similarly, I will again assign some beams along one and two and another one along two and three. So this is how you can assign uh, beam or frame elements in your uh, in this application. Once you have assigned the beam elements or frame elements, you, you need to assign the supports as well. You can see that along the right of the add beam frame element, you can see this fixed support type icon here. You can click on this button and you can see the options the fixed support, hinge support, roller support, and the delete support option. Firstly, I will assign the fixed support in this zero node. Again, I will assign the hinge support in this three number node. And I guess I will uh, provide this roller support at this joint zero. When you add your, your roller support, it will also ask you for the direction in which do you want your roller support. So I will, I guess I will type zero angle so that it resists the horizontal forces. Or I guess I will uh, edit this and okay, I will edit it later on.
so I guess I will just edit it right now so I will type in here 180 degrees so that the direction is uh, systematic with the view now after you have assigned I have assigned your fixed support hinge support and roller support next uh, if you want to delete so the support you can click on this button here oh, okay you can click on this button here and click on this delete support button and then click on the point where you don't want your support so I will just provide the scene support here now if you want to provide the loads you click on this arrow button right you can see that here so I'll click on this arrow button you have options like nodal point load the point load support displacement distributed loads and the moments firstly let's let's begin with the point load the nodal point load option will provide you nodal po point load at the nodes so that's about the nodal point load let's talk about the point load I've clicked on the point load option so when I want to provide a point load along the node 1 and beam along the no beam 1 and 2 so I will click on this beam here and then provide the load of uh, I guess 20 kilonewtons at a distance of uh, maybe 0 0.5 meter so I'll click on save and now it provides a point load you can see that here at the distance of 0 0.5 meters from 1 so I'll just remove this right now so once you have provided the loads here you can see the reactions available in this uh, in the supports you can also change the di uh, magnitude and the location of this point load by clicking on this load button here and then clicking on this pencil icon right here you can again I will change it to 30 kilonewtons and also I guess I will uh, provide this load at 1 meters so I'll click on save also I need to talk about this relative and absolute values if you provide the absolute values uh, you can see that the distance is in meters while in the case of relative you can see that the distance has no units basically what it does is that in the absolute case you will provide the distance in meters if the, I, if the length of the beam is 2 meters and you provide the distance as 1 meter, it will provide the point load at the mid span, right? So now if I uh, need to provide a load at 0 meters, that is the left support of the beam, I will just click on here, 0. So you can see that what that happens. So it provides the point load at the 0 meters from the left support. Now. If I provide, if I toggle this into relative, and if I uh, provide this as 0 0.5 distance, what it does is that it divides the uh, length of the beam by the length of the beam itself. So, the length of the beam is considered as one unit, and if I provide a 0 0.5 as the distance, it will provide the point load at the mid span. So I click on save, and you can see that the point load is applied on the mid span. Okay. This is all about the point load. Now I will discuss about the distributed load as well. So I'll provide this distributed load along the beam 01. So I click on this uh, beam here. I will I will provide. Uh, you can uh, provide a, a UDL as well as other loads. So when I click on this UDL button and provide this full length button, it will apply a UDL of 10 kilonewton per meter. So you can see that here. If I don't want to provide this, I will just edit it by clicking on this pencil arrow again. Uh, I will, I think, I guess I will provide a distributed load of uh, 10 kN at the left support and about 50 kN per meter at the right support. Again, full length, so I will click on save. So you can see that there is a load of 10 kN per meter at the left support and a load of 10, 50 kN per meter at the right support. Basically, you can also edit this by using the distance again. So, where do you want to start to provide the 10 kilonewton meter load? So, I guess I will again use the relative displacement. So, I think I will take a distance of 0 0.3, okay, 3, one meter, 3 meters. And again, I will again use the dis uh, relative distance. So, I will, I guess I will take a distance of 0 0.8. So, you can see that in this figure. This is all about the distributed load. You can also provide uh, support displacement as well. So I think I will provide a support displacement at this fixed support. 
so how much uh, displacement you need to provide so i think i will provide a displacement of minus 20 millimeters and a y the displacement of 40 millimeters you can also provide a rotation in radians also i think i will provide a ra rotation of 0 0.003 radians so this is provided the uh, applied uh, support displacement is shown by the red fonts here so dx dy and the rotation phi that is 0 0.003 so this is how you can apply loads and support dis displacements on your frames now once you have applied the loads you can view the bending moment diagram the shear force diagram and other diagrams by clicking on this uh, icon here you can see the options right now it is on the non option so the any no, not any diagrams have been shown so once you click on the axial force diagram it will draw you the axial force diagram again you can see the shear force diagram you can also view the bending moment diagram you can also view the slope and deflection diagram you can also view the free body diagrams of the elements so there are three elements so you can toggle them from this button here so basically this shows you the free body diagram cool right <laughs> now you can also generate the report so you i i click on this button uh, three dots here this icon and then click on the generate report option you need to provide some uh, options before it generates some report so it might take a little time for while generating report because uh, it depends upon the complexity of the uh, frames or the loads you have been provided so my report has been completed so you can see the reports here all the sections you have been provided like the node section line member supports member point loads and distributed loads will be displayed in the first page the second page will show you the frames and the support conditions loads applied on the structure the third page will show you the axial force diagram of the axial force diagram shear force diagram and bending moment of the individual component members so you can see that right now here <coughs> okay back to the uh, application now you can also uh, edit the beam elements here as well like you can provide a i will just show you that right here uh, add member sections so i will just add it i will say uh, i'll write a name called beam so the material i will provide here the young's modulus as 200 it's okay i will provide the unit weight as 25 kilonewton per meter cube so it will now take the self weight of the beam as well so that will all be all right the moment of inertia needs to be provided and uh, also the cross-sectional area also needs to be provided so i'll just create that beam here now i will assign the beam in this members initially it will be on the default option so now i've provided the beam that i've be created now you can also view the bending moment diagram and the shear force diagram in comparison to the previous diagrams it will it has now considered the self weight of the beams and the frames as well so that is more realistic you can also add other uh, frames also also by clicking on this member options so now i guess i will create a column similar to pre the previous op options here so i'll just type in create so similarly you can create other sections now the new thing about uh, this app is that you can also assign an internal hinge which was not available previously so i'll click on this frame option i will click on this add internal hinge and then click on the point where i need to provide the internal hinge you can see the bending moment diagram at the internal hinge is zero you can also change the location of this uh, internal hinge by just clicking on the uh, edit option and just provide where you want your internal hinge so i'll just change that so now you can see that the internal hinge also changes this is a very wonderful app and i hope this video has helped you 
you can see all the options right here as well so if there's any other problem you can also comment down in the comment section below also please consider uh, this uh, app and so help support this app on their Facebook and YouTube as well thank you for watching this video hope you like the video